By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we are here in round number four of the Urborg Lions Plains Pillage Tournament in Dusseldorf. So this is the third round. We already had the first three matches. So we're still in the Swiss part of the tournament. And we're going to watch two Dutchmen battling it out here in round number four. We have Wilfred, who is playing with a deck that I've called Atok Light. That may sound a little bit harmless, but trust me, it's super aggressive and it's got some of the strongest spells of the colors white, red and blue. And he is taking on Peter, also a Dutchman. We've seen him earlier in round number, I believe it was round number one or two, where he played against a Kobolds deck and he was very unfortunate. He's playing with the usual suspects. It's mainly a blue and white uh, deck and it's more on control, I would say, than Wilfred's deck. So Wilfred is more about the aggro approach and um, Peter also has a quick deck, but his deck is more about controlling the game. Um, that's the biggest difference. Now, before I go into the separate deck tech section where I will discuss these decks briefly, I would first like to point out that you can also go straight to the games and you can do that by checking the timestamp in the description below. So you can uh, find a link there, click the link that will take you straight to the games. Um, here we are going to start with the deck deck and I'm going to start by looking at the deck of Wilfred. And here we see the deck of Wilfred that I've called Atok Light. And as you can see, there are only two Atoks in this brew. Uh, when I look at this deck, this is very aggressive. He really wants to, uh, you know, get creatures out early with those four Savannah lines. He also plays with four Black Vice. So that means that this deck will most likely have a turn one play. And also look at all that power here. We've got um, the Black Lotuses. We've got all the Moxen that he needs to fit the colors that he plays with. So this can be a very quick deck, also playing with Surrender Befrits, just like his opponent, by the way, Peter's also playing with Surrender Befrits. And then he's got uh, red for the bolts, he's got white for the swords and the disenchants, and then he's got blue for the power cards, which is quite nice. So Ancestral Recall, um, the uh, Time Walk, but also the Time Twister. And Time Twister could be quite important here because this really is a deck where you quickly empty your hand. So I think the um, the Time Twister is going to be really good and probably is also playing with a Wheel of Fortune, although I'm not sure if I can spot one here on this deck picture, maybe the one behind the Chaos Orb there, I believe that's a Wheel of Fortune. It would make sense in this deck because you quickly empty your hand and then you just wanna get a fresh seven to get aggressive. And of course, the Time Twister is ideal with all the direct damage, you just shuffle all, that, all those lightning bolts back in your deck. Interesting that he's not playing with chains. Um, I kind of understand that because he's just playing with a lot of instants so he can always kind of respond. Of course, there are uh, two disintegrates there in, on the left top corner. So obviously that's a sorcery, but there's a lot of instant speed here. So that's really what he wants to do. He's also playing with a single copy of Hercules Recall, which I find quite interesting because the opponent could start boarding in quite some artifact hate. Uh, and the Hercule is kind of a counter spell for that. And because all his um, artifacts are really cheap, he could, let's let's say the opponent casts a Shatterstorm that you hardly ever see in old school. But okay, for the sake of conversation, okay, maybe um, against Peter because he's playing with white, maybe a, um, a Dust to Dust. Let's say he's playing a Dust to Dust. And in response, uh, Wilfred can play a Hercule's Recall and take his artifacts back and he can cast them back out almost for free. I mean, he's only got very low casting cost artifacts. The, the highest casting cost here is the Suchi, and even he can use the Hercules Recall to save one of his Suchis if he wants to. So I, I think the inclusion of Hercules Recall, not to forget, by the way, the Mistress Factory is also a great way to save your Mistress Factories. So I think Hercules Recall is a really great inclusion here. And of course, the card is very flexible. You can also use it against your opponent. So I'm, I'm really hoping to see the Hercules Recall in action. I think that's the most interesting card in this deck. I also like the single copy of Stone Rain. I think it's really important when you're playing old school that you have multiple ways to deal with lands. Just lands are just really strong and something that you have to think about. And in this deck, he's got Strip Mine, he's got Stone Rain, and he's got Chaos Orb. So that means he's got three ways to deal with the land, which is not too bad. My personal preference is at least four ways, but three is not too bad. Besides, he's playing really aggressive, so his deck just wants to win early game, so we could be up for really, really quick games. Now, let's take a look at Peter's Brew. 
And here we see, well, not the deck of Peter, because unfortunately I don't have a deck photo of his deck, but one of the key cards, some of the key cards in his deck, I should say. Um, I've called this deck the usual suspects because it just packs the cards that you expect. The body of the deck is blue and white, so that means four counter spells, four swords, disenchants, balances, but also, you know, the usual creatures, Surrendip, Freets, Savannah Lines, and then also a playset of Mishra's Factories. And it's actually quite light on creatures, so that makes it um, a little bit difficult for for uh, Peter, but of course he is playing with very mana efficient creatures. So creatures that cost him little mana, meaning that he can usually end play a creature and still be able to counter. Uh, he's got a lot of control cards. Um, he's playing with all the colors in uh, Magic Gathering. Why? Because he wants to play with all the restricted cards and the powered cards that are available. Now, why are those cards restricted? Because they are the strongest cards in the game. So this is basically what you get when you put all those cards together. And yeah, of course you then have a pretty strong deck, but I think it's going to be a tough matchup uh, for Peter because Wilfred's deck just seems to be very like fast and quick. You know, there are a lot of one drop options. There's a lot of direct damage, a lot of aggression. And the question is, you know, is, um, is Peter going to be quick enough to kind of drag the game a little bit longer? But then again, the danger is if he drags it into mid game, late game, all of a sudden there can be a fireball, or I guess in the case of, of Wilfred, a disintegrate out of nowhere finishing it. So. It, it's really a match of both of these players, you know, have cheap creatures, so they can be quite aggressive. But I think the biggest difference is that, that Wilfred's deck is definitely more aggressive than Peter's deck. And Peter's deck is more leaning towards, you know, card advantage uh, and control spells. So I think that's kind of the biggest difference. The, the, the way that um, a Peter is going to sideboard, actually this goes for both players, the way that they're going to sideboard is going to matter the way that they are going to, um, the way that Peter is going to play his counter spells is really going to matter. What is he going to counter? What is he going to allow to go onto the battlefield? Maybe thinking ahead, thinking about, you know, I can disenchant this, or swords this, or I can take some damage now, deal with it later, but I need my counter spell for other threats. You know, that's going to be uh, a big decider in this matchup. And also, of course, after sideboarding, where we will see probably red elemental blasts and blue elemental blasts. So this could be, th this matchup could go very quickly, and then I predict Wilfred to win, or it could kind of go into a longer mode, and then I can actually see Peter winning it, you know? So, so it could be really tight, or it could be over really quickly. Only one way to find out. Let's go to the games. Game number one, and we've got Wilfred sitting on the left with a big beer, and we've got Peter on the right there. Very classy playment there, Wilfred, and starting here with a Tundra and a Mach. Whoa, look at this! Wow, what's happening? Suchi turn one, and Ancestral Recall, okay. Well, if you're Peter, Peter now, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna pack my bags and, and see you later. Um, so let's take a look. What can Peter do? I mean, he, he needs a very explosive start. Just passing turn here. You know what? If he can just find a source for the Suchi, it's not all that bad. Let's see. He's probably gonna swing in here. Will we see a source or is he gonna take the damage? Maybe disenchant later? Or he simply doesn't have an answer? And it looks like he's gonna cast a source. You remember, we have no mana burn because we're playing Swedish rules. So that means Wilfred's gonna go to 24 here. And playing a Black Vice. And that means that he's going to take a damage because he's played that Swords. So he's going to go to 18. And playing out a Strip Mine, disenchanting the Black Vice. Now that's an interesting choice. Maybe I would have decided to keep the Dis in hand and wait, exactly wait for this moment here. Here we see a Suchi. Then he could have now used his Disenchant on the Suchi. And playing a City of Brass. I think he's still taking one damage and now playing a Time Walk. Oh, he's of course he's not taking damage because the Vice is gone. Still an 18. Look at that Ancestral Recall. So maybe this can help Peter getting back into this game. Library of Alexandria. That can help. What a complete Powerhouse is here, round number four, at the Urborg Legions, or Lions, Plains Chase, whatever it's called, tournament in Dusseldorf. Organized by Christian Reinhardt. He's taking a damage now, at least going to 17, and 
like, wow, that is nasty, playing a mind twist. So maybe, there we go, taking away the disenchant and the balance. Of course, the balance would have been a great card for Wilfred to play after that mind twist. Unfortunately, it's twisted out of his hand. Um, and maybe here, uh, Peter can come back from this, from that insane start of Wilfred. We do see a hit here, so that means it's gonna drop to 13 life. And also a Savannah line, so still pretty low on life here. Let's see, what can he do? Has a full grip of cards. Does he have enough to activate the Library of Alexandria? I don't think so. It looks like he's got six in hand. Now it's difficult, of course, for him. He, I don't think he has the luxury to just take six damage next turn, draw to seven. He's on 13. Maybe, maybe that's his strategy, though. Wilfred only two cards in hand, but it doesn't matter because he's got six damage on the board. Attacking right now. Let's see if Peter can do anything against this. He's actually taking the damage, so it's gonna take six, means he's gonna drop to seven. What can he do? Drawing a card here, of course. Now activating the lower. That's why he took the damage. Let's hope it pays off for him. If he just can play a disenchant and the swords. It's not too bad. At least he needs to take care of the Tsuchi. Remember, he's on seven. There's his Havana Lines. At least that's a blocker. That is something. And I wonder if he's got like a disenchant or something else in hand. And Wilfred looks like he's thinking, am I going to respond to this? Looking at his two cards in hand. And it's, it's a classic situation here where, because of the twist, Peter has card advantage. He also has the active library of Alexandria, um, but he's also almost dead. I mean, he's on seven and, you know, Wilfred has that Suchi and that Savannah Lines there. And it looks like he's allowing it. So he's allowing the Savannah Lines to resolve. Now the question is, is Peter going to do something else? He's passing turn here. Why would he play a disenchant or a swords now? There we see a sword supply of here's on the lines. That means he's gonna to go to nine. Or is he gonna to, going to counter this? We have to wait. Taking a damage here, countering it. So that means he's stuck on seven, taking a damage, going to six. And he's still going to attack here. And Savannah line on Savannah line, taking four damage. That means I believe he's now on two life. And are we going to see a Wheel of Fortune? Okay, I wanted to say a Side Blast or a Lightning Bolt, but we're actually going to see a Wheel of Fortune. That is pretty sweet. Remember, uh, Wilfred is still on 24 life here. And a full grip of cards, Time Walk, and this means it's probably over. Taking the extra turn here, going to untap and draw. And that's it. This is game one. So it's done here for Peter. And uh, wow, I think if a few small things would have gone differently, then perhaps Peter could have gotten really back into this match, but he was really against the wall really, really quickly. Um, like I talked about in the deck deck, Wilfred's deck is quite aggressive. So I think, you know, I, I think Peter really has to think about his strategy, where to target the disenchants and the swords and whatnot. Okay, anyway, this, uh, the players are going to look at their sideboards and we are going to catch up with them in game number two. Game number two. And let's take a look how this is going to pan out. We need, uh, we've got Peyton on the play probably. Oh, and look at that, he took a mulligan. That's not a great start. He needs to win this after losing the first game. Just playing a Tundra passing turn here. Will we see another explosive, I guess we are, by Wilfred here, double mox. There's a Surrendip. 3-4 Flyer Powerhouse from Arabian Nights, turn one. And will we see Peter with a Surrendip as well? They're both playing with, well, actually, Wilf Wilfred is playing with three and Peter's playing with a full play set. Gonna take a damage here, dropping down to 19. And let's see, what is he going to do? Attacking here. Is he going to take a damage? Yes, he is. So he's gonna drop to 17. And again, there's early pressure here coming from, from Wilfred. We saw that in game one as well. And is he passing turn here? End of turn, he's playing a disenchant on a Mox Sapphire. In, in response, Ancestral Recall. I mean, come on. Wilfred is drawing really, really nicely here against uh, 
against Peter. Again, an early ancestral recall for him. And Peter playing a Mishra's factory here. But not finding anything, it seems, at least not a creature. Remember, he is pretty light on creatures in his deck with a playset of Savannah Lines, a playset of Surrendips, and of course, four factories. There's a Savannah Lines. And attacking now for three. And he's going to take the damage again, dropping down to 14. Interesting enough, actually, that, that Wilfred is not attacking with... Okay, that explains it's playing an Atox second main. I want to say that he's not attacking with his factory. And there is a Mana Drain taking care of that. So that means that Peter will have two extra mana to use. Perhaps finding a Brain Geyser, because he's pretty low on cards there, it seems. And he's playing a Surrendip now for himself. Actually, a double Surrendip. Okay, that's uh, that's looking pretty good now. Uh, damage here, of course, from the Surrendip for Wilfred, dropping down to 17. And now it's a little bit difficult. Wilfred really needs to take care of these two Surrendips if he wants to find an opening again. Interesting situation here now. Of course, Surrendips are three, four flyers. So if you have a Surrendip, Surrendip situation, they can just block each other, cancel each other out. But they still deal damage, of course. That means for Peter next turn, he will, he will take uh, two damage if he doesn't do anything. There's another Atok. So playing with two Atoks in total. So once on the board, once on the graveyard. Two damage here for Peter, dropping to 12. And this is not, I mean, it's good for Peter that he has the blockers, but it's not great because he's kind of forced to wait. He cannot just attack now because of all the attackers in, on, on Wilfred's side. And he is on 12, so he's kind of on a six turn clock by his own surrender of Fritz, which is not great. So this standstill is actually good for Wilfred. I mean, he has more cards, he has more life. He's on 17 still, if I'm not mistaken. And that's probably why Peter is deciding to attack here. It is risky though. So he's blocking with one surrender, taking three damage. He's going to drop to 14. And it probably means that next turn, or what does he have? Does he have a time walk? Oh, he's got a balance. Okay, so he was probably hoping for something else to happen here. He's playing the balance. There's a quick lightning bolt on Peter's life total, I assume. So that means he's going to drop to nine. And Wilfred has to sack a creature because of that lion's. And of course, he has to throw away a lot of cards. So this is a pretty nice balance. The problem remains, though, that he's now open for that Atok. I guess the Atok is going to attack. We'll, we'll just have to see. First, uh, Wilfred is going to take turn. He's going to take a damage. going to drop to 13. He's going to draw his card for turn. He can at least swing in with the Surrender for 3. Put him on 6. But then he's also open for the 6 damage from... From Peter. Look at that. He's attacking, so he's gonna. No, he's changing his mind, it seems. This is interesting. What is he going to do here? He can also choose to go, you know, attack with the Atok as well, kind of forcing Peter to block the Atok with that's what he's gonna well, that's what he's gonna go for here. Attacking, forcing Peter probably to use his factory. So he's gonna feed his Mox Ruby probably to his Atok to keep it keep him alive. Here we see the activation of the factory blocking the Atok. There we see the Mox getting eaten. So that means he's gonna lose it and then take three damage from the surrender, gonna drop to six. And pass turn. Take two damage from his own surrenders, dropping to four life here. This is quite interesting. This top deck is going to be very important for, for Peter here. Drawing card for turn. This is going to be important. A land. Yeah, maybe I would have just kept it in hand, actually, just to, to to pretend it's something. You know, maybe make make Peter doubt what to do. Now he knows it's just a land. I mean, he can attack here. Wilfred's on 13, but if he attacks, he's dead. And actually, he's saying, you know what? You've got game. I'm not going to win this one. And uh, yeah, I think that's correct. To make matters worse, there was a red elemental blast. So that means that Wilfred is actually winning this two to zero. Wow! And I think I think in both games, it it it, it, got, it was decided very quickly in the game. I mean, Wilfred had just fantastic openings. That game one opening was insane, 
And um, in game two, again, he had a very good opening. Don't forget that early ancestral recall that he had in both of the games. I mean, that really helps when you're playing an aggro deck because you can just refill your hand. So great games. Uh, thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And I would also like to thank Micha and Christian for organizing this great event. So just to clarify, this is the Urborg Alliance Plains Pillage Tournament in Dusseldorf. So thank you guys for organizing this. And also thank you for having me, for letting me record these matches. Also a big thank you to all the players. Um, I kind of feel bad for Peter because he's actually won all his games off camera, but all his games on camera he has lost. His deck is actually quite strong. And again, Peter, I feel that in this matchup you were highly unlucky. And you know, Wilfred just has a very, very strong deck. And especially when he gets those ancestral recalls in to, to refill his hand. Um, you know, I, there are not a lot of decks that would have won uh, this matchup with, with Wilfred drawing, drawing the way he did actually. Um, so that's it for now. If you want to support the channel, please leave a comment, leave a like, all that helps. Click the notification bell, apparently that's a thing. That helps as well. If you're not a sub yet, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe. We're around 2,000 subscribers now. And the more subs, you know, the more love we get back from YouTube. Talking about love, you can also support Timmy Talks financially by becoming a patron of the channel. And you can do that by visiting our Patreon page. There's probably a link popping up right now. And talking about that, let's take a look at the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing, wonderful channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ich kann das Finger zu Sumba gesehen.